we're going to go into the Rising Thunder stuff. Today, I'm going to be talking about a Chell build that's super basic. This is the, the build that I would recommend for people who are just starting out in this game, but I actually really like it for, for general play. So we're going to walk through that, and the reason why I like this build, well, I, I'll, I'll walk through the build and, and kind of how it works in a minute, but the reason I like this build, excuse me, is because I think that I think that learning is is uh, in general learning new skills is a tricky process, and if you pay attention to the order in which you learn stuff and the kind of the the drills and rituals and methods that you that you apply to learning a new thing, it's you you can you can kind of streamline your learning and basically get better faster. Right? Like if you just throw time at something, you'll get better eventually. But if you throw time and a little bit of pre-planning and thought into something, then I think you get better more efficiently. And so this is a, a Chell build that's super basic. And the reason why I like it is actually because I think those basics are useful for new players. And this is one that I still run all the time. Okay. Um, it is, I will go ahead and open, I will go ahead and open training mode, but while Rising Thunder opens. Um, yeah, basically the, the idea with this build is there are no long combos um, and it's all focused on having consistent access to your specials and a strong um, neutral game, right? You don't have to make any hard decisions with it really. And it's mostly just focused on kind of getting you in the game and teaching you the basics around stuff like Movement, zoning, footsies, like, without having to think too much. Uh, or at least without having to think too much early on. So let's go ahead. Um, I am going to, well, I will sit down here and I will just explain the kind of the concept, conceptual stuff behind this first. So we'll go into the build in a little bit. But the important thing is, if you are a experienced fighting game player, and you've already been through the rigmarole of, of learning a new fighting game um, multiple times, then sometimes that your experience might not necessarily be that applicable if you're trying to teach someone else who is just uh, who, who, who's learning a fighting game for, for the first time, right? If I pick up a new fighting game, I know what to look for in characters, I know what to look for in systems, because I've probably played games that echo those characters or systems before, and I've been through the, the process of being shitty at a fighting game and then gradually getting better. So I know what it looks like when I get better and when I improve. But if you're new at fighting games and you don't actually, you don't necessarily have that experience, it's not as easy to, to find um, the right method for learning how to, how to learn a new game. And when an experienced player picks up, so, so as an experienced player, when I step into Rising Thunder, I can Google stuff like, uh, you know, like shell bread and butter combos or whatever. And it'll give me a build that's a pretty optimal build for Chell in terms of kind of being versatile, having high, you know, uh, high damage options, um, you know, kind of like uh, good, good neutral options, but it relies on a skill set that I already have, right? And if you're teaching someone from scratch or if you're learning because this is your first fighting game, um, you don't necessarily have a lot of those fundamentals necessary to make that build work the way it should. It should. Right? And even if you do, that might not uh, be the optimal way for learning how to play this game or how to, learning how to play fighting games overall. Right? Um, the way I think of it is, and, and I think this is true not just for fighting games for anything, but I, I like to break things up into as small chunks as possible. Right? So if I take the, the kind of the, the general optimal shell build, um, which is usually running kinetic advance, so you have dash ca ca cancels, um, you run usually the regular fireball, um, probably Crush Breeze, which is the, the Dragon Punch with the combo extension, and then one of the high damaging Special 3s, um, so either, either Special 3 version 1 or Special 3 version 3. Um, that is, that, you know, that's probably the build that's going to get you the most mileage when you're playing out on ranked play, um, but that assumes that you're able to do stuff like consistently put together Chell's combos, um, that you have a good access, you have a good uh, understanding of how the cooldown system works, and you know how to play around stuff like having your Dragon Punch on cooldown, which is all pretty tricky, right? It's, 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 a ne it's another layer of stuff that you have to learn if you're a new player. Um, so I like this, this, uh, this Chell build because it gets rid of a lot of that. 
that doesn't mean that you don't practice that stuff, right? So if you're learning Shell, you should be learning eventually her kinetic events, combo extensions, uh, off a throw and off a dragon punch and whatever. But you also want to get in the game quickly, right? Um, and you and you want to have access to your a reasonable amount of access to your moves, um, so you can start learning stuff like how pokes and footsies work, just how fighting games in general work, um, without having to learn a bunch of combos. And so. This build I like because it, it, it allows you not just to, to learn the basics of the character really easily, it also allows you to test the opponent and, uh, opponent and it gives you the most possible chances to look for patterns in their behavior uh, easily. Which is important because that means, that, that means you get to, to play the mental part of, of fighting games uh, much more quickly than you would if you're doing a more complicated character or a more complicated build. So that's the idea, right? Is This is a build that I would, I would want you to take um, on kind of ranked play or in, in, in lobbies or whatever on days one through ten of learning Rising Thunder so that you can then so that you can get road experience without you know kind of playing against live human beings without having to sit and think oh wait did, did I forget my combo what did I do right um, that's super frustrating so you should be you should still be learning that stuff and you should be doing it in training mode um, but I think you you want to you want to work your way up there, right? What is optimal for an experienced fighting game player is not necessarily optimal for learning the game. Um, in other words, this is the distinction I draw between playing to win and playing to learn, right? So if you're playing to win, then you want to optimize your chances for success in any given uh, scenario, right? That's if you're, if you're trying to climb the ladder, right? Then you pick the build that is optimized against, um, you know, you kind of have like a general purpose build right now, and then once you see who they've who, who they've picked and you've won or lost your first game, you pick the variants that that give you the best chance of winning. Um, overall, this build, the playing to learn build, will not give you the best chances of winning. I don't think um, it might work for some players. It's certainly like I don't think it's the most powerful build. Um, but what I do think is that it's the, it's, it's a, it's the optimal platform for learning how to play this game and this character. So now we're going to walk into it. That's enough uh, prelude. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube and have already tuned or are about to, to uh, stop watching because of that 10 minute introduction, I'm sorry, you're going to miss out on some cool stuff. Cool. So, yes, we will buy cheese. We will hear Crow yell at us, and then we will switch to... So here's the build. Saluden a la it's Chell, Kinetic Deflect. Uh, you can pick either Night Sun or Solar Flare. These are her two fireballs. Um, I personally like messing around with Solar Flare, but I think for, for newbies, Night Sun is, is probably the better option. Um, this is the, the fireball that, that travels the full way. Um, you want to pick Spiral Eclipse, which is the, the Dragon Punch with no combo extender. And then you want to pick Stinging Wind, which is the 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 easiest to combo into out of her special threes, but it's the the lowest damaging. So we'll go ahead and, and I'll, we'll take this first spin in training mode. Okay. So. Right off the bat, um, one of the strengths of this build is its simplicity, right? So if you aren't familiar with her moveset, this is her Fireball, that special one. It's default U on the keyboard, right? Um, you can do a fast uh, uh, a version that travels across the, the, screen, the screen faster um, by, uh, by holding forward, or you can slow it down by holding back, right? You got her Dragon Punch, basic anti-air, it's invincible in startup. And then you've got her Hurricane Kick, but it's the ground finisher, so it just knocks them over. It doesn't, you don't get to pop them up in the air or anything. Um, and you've got Kinetic Deflect, which is, it's the system that lets you burst out of block strings or hit stun, um, but you don't get any fancy combo extensions. And what that means is, if I play Kinetic Advance Chell, then I get a lot more options to, to do uh, more damage off of her Dragon Punch. Um, I can cancel her Fireball and then dash after it, right? So I get free pressure. Um, I can even cancel a super fireball, right? I'm actually gonna switch to Kinetic Advance real quick so you can see all the stuff that I'm doing, right? So if I'm playing in Kinetic Advance, then I can do stuff like, I can get more damage off of a throw. Um, I can cover a jump in or cover a dash with, uh, with Kinetic Advance. If a Dragon Punch messes up, I can keep it safe. I can even cancel my, my super fireball, right? But the problem is, is that 
for new fighting game players, that's a, that's a lot of stuff to think about. And what it means is that more often than not, your meter is going to go unused, or you won't be using it optimally. And you might not even know what optimal usage is, right? Like, you might not even know whether you're supposed to be doing this or that or this other thing with your meter. And if you're dealing with that in the course of playing a game against another person, that can get super frustrating super quickly, right? And it'll make you feel bad. And if you start feeling bad about playing this game while you're playing it, then you're probably not going to play for very long, and you're not going to get very good. Right? Which means that all the possible formative stuff that you could get from fighting games, you won't actually get. And that would suck. Right? So we want to build that minimizes frustration. What that means is, um, for one, simple combos, strong options, and not, like, you, above all, you don't, want to, you don't want to have to think too hard about what you're doing in the game other than what you're doing in the moment. So the bigger strategic stuff, we want to deal with later. Okay? So a few things about this build. We'll go ahead and turn short cooldowns off. So, Fireball comes off cooldown pretty quickly. Um, the, the general rule of thumb is that you should be roughly able to have one Fireball on the screen at all times. The one exception is if, uh, if it misses completely so they don't block it or get hit by it, then it'll take a little while for, for your Fireball to go on cooldown, which is a good thing because we don't want you to be able to spam too hard, right? Um, your Dragon Punch comes off of cooldown, I believe that's like a 4, 4.5 or 5 seconds, yeah, it says 4.5 seconds cooldown there, which is a shorter cooldown than her other, her other Dragon Punch, which lets you combo after it. So you're going to have access to more Dragon Punches, which is really important. Last thing is her, her special 3. So this, this move is used in two main situations. One is if they're spamming fireballs, I'll go ahead and get enemy Chell to spam some fireballs. So, if you are getting hit by fireballs, a well-timed special 3 can go through it, and that's fantastic. However, that doesn't happen that often. Um, it is useful, and so it's worth keeping in mind, um, but it's not, it's not the main use of special 3. Um, what you'll be using it more for is comboing off of lights, right? So special 3 can combo off of uh, up to 3 crouching lights. Oops, once it's off cooldown. And that's like, that's not that much damage, right? But it's pretty good off crouching lights. What it does is it makes your crouching lights dangerous because anyone who gets hit by one of these, you're gonna hit by two more, plus they'll get knocked down, then you can chase them and, and you can, can keep up the pressure, right? So basically, uh, it's important for Chell, well, Chell doesn't need to be able to combo off crouching lights to win, but it certainly helps, especially early on, because it gives you an easy combo that you can confirm into, right? And by confirm, what I mean is you can you can hit the opponent with one, and then see if they block it, uh, and keep on hitting them with more, so that if if I if I get to see that they haven't blocked it, then it's, I have plenty of time to react with a special three. And if they have blocked it, let's say she blocked it there. I can see that by the time I'm done with my second or third crouching light and I don't go in, into the special three, right? I get to save it and and maybe I wanna like, so if, let's say we put her on always block, I can see she, that she's blocking it, right? So maybe after two I walk up and I throw or something and I get some damage. And yeah, the throw is not as dangerous as it would be if I had kinetic advance because then I could do a longer combo after it, but it's still good. It knocks him down, it opens him up, um, I get to, I get, you know, I still have the momentum in my favor. So the other thing I like about this build is this Dragon Punch comes off cooldown a little bit more quickly, but uh, Dragon Punch is as, you know, by nature of the move, there's a, there's a whole lot of recovery if I mess it up, right? If I whip, uh, enemy Chell or enemy whoever gets you know, a whole like two seconds to punish me with whatever combo she wants to hit me with. Um, if you run Kinetic Advance, then you can make that Dragon Punch safe, right? Because you can cancel into a dash like I showed you earlier. However, that means you need to be th you need to be ready to do that, and a new player probably isn't going to be ready to do that yet. So instead, the reason I like um, the, the reason I like Kinetic Deflect on this build is because. If Chell starts beating me up, right, or if I get punished for my Dragon Punch, I can just press uh, two special moves to add, activate Kinetic Deflect. 
Um, we'll go ahead and, and start the, the we'll, we'll record something. Um, so that's a handy combo you can do with this build up. Um, we'll go over that in a second. But let's say I whiff my Dragon Punch and yeah, it's not going to look like that. But I can Kinetic Deflect. Uh, I've used my meter successfully, right? Uh, you know, Kinetic Advance, I can't do it in that situation because I'm already getting hit. Alright, that wasn't a great show, but whatever. Um, so, basically, you don't need to be thinking about how to use your meter until you're in a situation where you have a decent amount of time to use it, right? Um, like, especially if you're playing against someone who does a really long Kinetic Advance combo, you have plenty of time to burst out. So, that, re that reduces some of the, the cognitive overload of playing this game. Right? Because now you don't need to think about stuff like, oh, how do I use my kinetic meter? You you will be you will only need to use it in situations where there's literally nothing else that you can do because you're getting hit. Right? So you don't have to worry about that stuff. Uh, you don't have to worry as much about combo extensions off the off of um, kinetic advance or off of her more powerful specials. So you get to focus on actually just playing the game, right? And playing against players uh, without feeling like you're leaving a lot of stuff on the table. Um, that doesn't mean there aren't combos that you need to learn with this build, though, so we'll go into those next. So, a lot of stuff, a lot of pressure is going to start with your uh, your sweep, it's your, your crouching H, which is pretty darn fast. Uh, it gets you a knockdown, so if it hits, then you can move in and start pressuring them. And, on hit or block, you can follow it up with a fireball. That, right? Now, what this means is, uh, if they get hit, obviously they get knocked down and they don't get hit by the fireball, but that's fine. If they block it, you, you canceling it, canceling the sweep into the fireball makes that fireball, uh, or makes the sweep somewhat safer. It's not completely safe, like a smart player can still punish it, but it's very, situ it's pretty situational and it has to be at the right range and so on, right? And it gets you some, some chip damage and a little extra pressure, right? So this in general, like, if you're at about this range, Crouch H into Fireball is a pretty good kind of go-to option, right? Either you get the knockdown or you push them away a little bit, you get to bully them around the screen. Uh, so we, that is, that, that's kind of your, your, your go-to poke. Obviously her stand H is also very good. Um, and her stand medium kick is also neat because it moves you forward a little bit, right? So it can be used to, to kind of ambiguously get space. Uh, when you're fighting around here, but that's a pretty advanced concept. So if you don't want to deal with it right now, that's fine, right? Um, main thing to know is that you're, you're at this range. It's gonna be your, your crouching H is your most powerful thing. But in order to keep it safe and kind of bully your opponent, you probably want to combo it into to fireball, right? If they start jumping it around this range, you want you're, you're basically waiting for them to jump so you can hit them with a dragon punch. That's great. And you can actually tack a little bit of extra damage on the dragon punch. Um, depending on the range that they're at and whether they're jumping, right? So they're jumping, for this example, we'll start jumping straight up. Um, oh, I guess it doesn't work always at mid-screen. We'll get you in the corner. Get in that corner. Alright, so here, well... Oh. Weird. Did we pass that out? I'm pretty sure that still works. Uh, maybe I need to do it later in the jump arc. Oh. Look at that, look at that enemy shell just bouncing me. Huh. Well maybe I think it, it then it's probably off different jump arcs or something. But there's a way to occasionally combo a uh, a sweep after the dragon punch for some bonus damage. Which is neat, but you don't really need to worry too much about that. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, you got a light, light, light into that. And then if you get like a big old punish, like let's say they're just sitting there dizzy or uh, they whiffed a dragon punch or whatever, you can do toward H, which hits twice. After the second hit, you hit toward M for that, that uh, hop kick right here. So one, two, three. And then either special three or special two. Right, depending on which one is off cooldown, right? If they're both off cooldown, well, you, you kind of have an interesting choice here because if you hit this, then you don't have an anti-air for a couple seconds, um, but you can go for low, low, light, light, low lights and see that, right? 
that didn't combo. Right? If you go for that, it's I think about the same amount of damage. You don't get a credible threat of low lights afterwards because that your special three will be on cooldown. But if they do jump, you do have a dragon punch, right? So, yeah, a lot of your, you're not going to get that many big damage opportunities. So, that, honestly, that combo isn't that big, uh, uh, that that bad, right? For no meter expense, you get 230. It's not bad for a punish. Um, and if you jump in, you get even more damage, right? Or off a cross-up. Oh. Hmm. Ah, well, that's a combo, but you get the idea. Um... Also, if you have, if you, if again, if they miss a dragon punch or you have an opportunity for a quick punish, but you don't have the wind up for that, um, you can do uh, just a close stand H in the special three. Okay. Yeah, that also works. So if you want like a, a combo that starts off like a point blank close medium into a crouch medium. that and you can follow up with a fireball the fireball doesn't always hit unless you pick the uh the, the close range fireball the special two variant i'll pick it real quick i should probably go into the difference between the two fireballs so before you saw me picking the the full length screen length fireball this one she shoots at the ground um, it's cool i think it's a little bit faster and it knocks down on hit which is awesome oops it also combos uh, off those two mediums, which is cool. Um, basically, it's a tool that's used for a little more aggression. I have a lot of fun with it, but it's not for everybody, right? So you can try them both out and see which one you like more. Um, I think it's useful against Edge, and it's useful against um, Dauntless. Characters who need to come straight at you in order to get in, it's, it's nice, right? Um, it can be used to bully Crow around a lot, and that's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, overall, like... This build, uh, this build in general doesn't depend one way or another on the fireball that you pick. The basic idea is that uh, it simplifies things. It simplifies things a lot because you don't need to worry so much about meter management and you don't need to worry about... Um, you, you, you basically, you, can, you, you don't need to worry too much about combos or meter management be, and you can just kind of focus on what the game gives you right now. So I'm going to switch over again to the kind of full, the full screen... Um, camera view for a second to kind of wrap this up and then we'll go into playing some games with this. So now that you have an idea of this build, I like to use it like even against, you know, I, I play with it a lot actually, I prefer it um, because the reason I like to play Chell when I do play Chell is not necessarily to kind of build the most potent version of Chell, it's to learn more about the game and, and learn more about the kind of that, that like fireball footsies DP core fighting game element, which a lot of the other characters don't really play the same way, right? Like Crow plays that that part of the game, that chunk of the game very differently than Chell does. And so I want to learn how to play that part of the game better, not necessarily play like Chell as like a top you know, tournament level character or whatever, right? If I, again, this is playing to learn, not playing to win. One of the neat things about this build though is uh, it's not just play to learn about yourself and about the game, it's also play to learn about your opponent. And what I mean by that is, uh, he says as he takes a deep breath and sips his whiskey, What I mean by that is, with with Kinetic Advance and with the kind of optimal Chell builds, you hit hard, right? And it's about kind of creating those openings and then capitalizing on them for big damage. Not unlike like an Evil Ryu in Street Fighter 4, right? So like if you haven't played that much Street Fighter 4, Evil Ryu basically sacrificed a good amount of his pokes and tool and like footsies tools um, in order for higher damage off the pokes that he does land. Right, compared to regular Ryu, who doesn't have uh, nearly as good combos, um, but has better pokes and general, generally like a better footsies game. Right now, in terms of the power rankings of Street Fighter Four, Evil Ryu turned out to be much better than Ryu, um, and that fact will haunt me for the rest of my life. Um, and playing Chell that way is perfectly fine, and it's fun. But the the way that I like to play Rising Thunder is I want to learn as much about my opponent as possible. I want to learn all their ticks. I want to learn if they jump in a lot. I want to learn how they test me. 
Um, and I want and I want as many options as possible, or as many opportunities as possible to learn that stuff. Which means um, I don't like. And this is this is this is kind of one of my personality quirks, I guess. Like if I beat you, I don't want to just beat you once. I want to beat you ten times in a row. I want to have you completely crushed. Right? I don't want my victory to be a fluke of me playing better in this one match. I want to be a better player than you. And I want to understand you better than you understand yourself. And in order to get that kind of domination, I need to get a lot of experience playing against you so I understand who you are and how you think. And um, this build, since you don't have optimal combos and since you have kinetic deflect to get you kind of basically like an extra, you, you get kind of two or three get out of jail free cards for every, every match, right? Um, you get more time to learn about your opponent and how they play. And I think that's really cool. Um, I like it a lot. That's how I, I try to play when I, when I play online. Like, I'm not looking for that kind of that crazy killer setup that I do against everybody and murder them. I want to learn who each person is, right? And more, I want to learn more about how they play the game and how they think. Um, and with Kinetic Deflect and with the, 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 uh, the kind of the low damaging combos, that's basically what you get, right? So you get a few get out of jail free cards. Between Chell's really good Dragon Punch and Kinetic Deflect, you get a lot of opportunities to, uh, to kind of reset the momentum, say, hey, wait, 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 okay, I lost that exchange, now let's try this again, right? Um, and so you should get more t more time to learn about who your opponent is and learn about and, and train them, right? You get to train them into thinking that some things are safe when they're not, right? You get to train them into going into thinking that you're going to throw them because you threw them two or three times already, and then this time they eat like a stand a meaty fierce age or whatever, right? Uh, a meaty stand age, whatever it is, right? You get more opportunities to do that with this build, and that's honestly like that's the fun for me in fighting games. That's the, that's the most of it. Right? I'm not. I'm not the kind of guy who really likes looking for broken stuff. I'm the kind of guy who really likes being able to play someone and learn more more about them. And this shell build is kind of the way that I do that. So that, I think that's a pretty cool concept, right? About fighting games is that there are different ways to play, different mentalities, right? There's there's different kinds of fun in these games. Like people play them for all kinds of different reasons. And what you find fun might not be what I find fun, right? Um, playing the way that they do on the Evo stage or on the Capcom Cup stage or hopefully one day the Rising Thunder Cup stage, that might not be fun for you, right? But that doesn't mean you don't, you don't, you don't play this game or you don't have fun playing this game. I have a lot of fun playing builds that are kind of off meta just because it makes me learn more about this game and how, and how it works, right? Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Um, here's where I wrap up the kind of explanation part. If you want to stick around, I'm going to play some, some ranked games online or maybe start a lobby if anyone wants to play. But um, if, you're, uh, if you've been watching and you've enjoyed this, thank you very much. Um, like I say every time, I wouldn't be doing this if there weren't people tuning in and watching, and I appreciate it. I really do. Uh, it means a lot to me. Um, and if this stuff is useful, like, you know, tell your friends to watch. Send them the YouTube videos. I, I usually post them on, on uh, my Twitter, at Pat the Flip. But uh, um, there are, you know, YouTube channels, youtube.com slash Pat the Flip. You can subscribe to the Switch channel and, and kind of get the notifications when I go live, whatever. But I really appreciate it when, when y'all tune in and keep watching. Because, like, I don't know, this the stuff that I'm trying to do with fighting games and with streaming is, I think, a little bit different than what most people do. And I, I hope y'all like it. So thanks a lot.